YouTube, Topaz Yates back with another daily review and today we're going to jump into this new Prime, the Golden Era and I got so much against this motherfucking track man because one, they're talking about the Golden Era of hip hop in terms of them in which this is the thing that everybody just don't fucking get everybody's golden era is typically the time that they grew up on hip-hop, the times that they actually enjoyed the music of it. There's no specific golden era, dude. In the beginning skit of the song, it said late 70s, early 80s, when the really hip-hop really was smacking and shit. But then, there's a large amount of people who saying the golden era is the fucking 90s right now. And when this current generation grows the fuck up, they're going to be looking back at their childhood like this was the golden era for them. And the thing that's fucked up about it is how each individual generation uses this whole thought process in order to throw salt on the next generation instead of letting them go ahead and come up in the game, letting them get their fucking money and do their fucking music. Instead, you want to throw salt on them saying you wasn't like what we was like back in the day. And then breaking down some of the lyrics that Royce the Five Nine was jumping on, man, it kind of upped me even more when he jumped into a whole light skin versus dark skin type shit as if it was the damn field niggas versus the damn house niggas. And dudes need to get off of that slavery mindset shit because none of these white supremacists out here, and I don't mean just the radical skinhead white supremacists, but your typical white families that do everything in their power to hold black people down, they're considered to be white supremacists. If you are light skin or you are dark skin, you are a nigga. Point blank, period. There's no in between. There's no biracial. When you are identified as having black blood, you are black from there on out, and you are subject to white supremacy. Now, Royce did have some points like before the mass media takeover by, say, Viacom and all the snowboarders, as he said and shit, man, that there was a lot more raw musicians getting played and such in the mainstream. But the game has evolved and such, and there are still a good amount of raw MCs that's out there right Right now, not only getting promotion and shit in the mainstream, but also mainly in the damn underground. Like, a lot of people want to look at dudes like Kendrick or J. Cole like, oh, they are throwbacks to this time period and shit. No, motherfucker. They are doing the thing right now, so they are this damn generation. And to put on top of that, man, Joey Badass's verse really wasn't that damn entertaining at all. And that beat by DJ Camille was I at best. I mean, I do feel as though it is worth a listen, but one of those that I I just can't fuck with overall as a fucking fan of hip hop type shit. But this concludes today's review, man, and we're gonna jump into a brief instrumental from underground producer Lazy Rider Beats. Then we're gonna jump into some of your questions. came out saying that G-Unit worked in affiliation to the fact that I'm saying that none of these label damn projects ever motherfucking work. And let me tell you why G-Unit worked. See, G-Unit was more of a group than a damn record label just putting together fucking music to throw it out there. But besides that, man, you realize that even though every individual on G-Unit was gangster, they all had different forms of gangster thrown together, you did? There was a variation between the MCs, like Take the Game, even though he was only with them but for so damn long, the game was West Coast gangster music. Then you got Young Buck, who is Southern gangster music. And then you got Lloyd Banks, who even though him and 50 both northern gangster music and shit, Lloyd Banks was vastly better of a lyricist. He was more of a punchline rapper and shit, while 50 Cent has always been like catchy bully with the motherfucking music type shit. So there's differences in all of these MCs all coming together, bringing in more people to this motherfucking label. That's why G-Unit worked and all of these other shits don't. And then he also said that I made really good points on this whole J. Cole and Dreamsville project, but yet overall it's good music. And you gotta understand what you just said there. Like, let me put it in a McDonald's metaphor type shit. You're saying, even though I know this McDonald's food is not good for me, even though all of the burgers that McDonald's do, they're all trying to emulate the damn Big Mac and shit, but none of them is as good as the fucking Big Mac. Even though the only different types of burgers that McDonald's have is a ripoff of what other competition has and shit. Even all of that is still good fast food. That's what you're saying, my dude. I hope you enjoyed the show. 
You can follow me at Twitter up there. And you can go to downloadpads.com that's down there to read today's article.